Okay, so now I am walking. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm eating peppermints, but no food. Um, a pathway. I'm walking a pathway. I'm walking on the trail. Um, the Holy Spirit led me on this trail, and it's about to end, looks like, but um, I'm about to give uh, part four, um, the verbal uh, part four of my testimony about my pregnancy. Um, but I wanted to say before I go into this part four is that I left out the detail about them saying that they would rape and molest my son. When they found out the evidence, when Jim McDougal in January 2019, um, when Jim McDougal found out about the evidence to my case, he said that he interviewed someone and found out the truth and that it was the fault of the Conroe Police Department and that it should not have to go to trial. I was afraid of my baby being at Cynthia's because I knew that Austin was at Cynthia's. And I already didn't trust Joseph. And I was very leery about Cynthia already. But mothers are automatically very, the trail is ending. Oh no, it keeps going. The mothers are all, all, always um, very um, cautious when it comes to our children. So, you don't just trust anybody with your newborn, especially if you not if you haven't been knowing that person. Like I can't even trust some people in my family that I have been knowing my entire life with my newborn or my older children. So, Austin, when he had got out of prison, he was he went in the closet and my son was in the closet and I always kept everything clean. I kept both doors open because my closet was connected to my son's bedroom. So he would run through the closet and play in his room and in my room. Okay, I'm gonna turn around and go back on the trail because they're trying to speed past here and make a lot of noise. So okay, I see why God is taking me in certain areas where they can't come th through speed and with their vehicles. So I'm gonna have to turn back around and um, go on this trail back, but it's only a short trail, but my testimony is not that much. They got a bench over there with this crazy lady sitting over there, but I don't give a damn. I'm going to sit right there next to her ass, and she better not try nothing. So anyway, um, my son had went in the closet with his dad and tried to give him a hug. And, you know, when they're really short, their heads kind of come by that area, by your hips. And my son was just giving him a hug and playing, and... Austin was like, Drea, he put his head, he was like, he got his head by my D. And I was like, hold on, like, why are you even talking like that? Like, come on, like, he's just a kid. And I, and I went and got my son and grabbed him and was like, come out here with me. And then I was looking at him, I don't even want you in there around my son talking like that. You know, like, what you mean he got his head on your, on your D? Like, stop talking like that. Don't even talk like that. I ain't never let my son come and run up to me and give me a hug. And, I, you know, his head might be right by your hips, but he's not thinking like that. And I ain't finna say, oh, his head by my pee. His head by my pee. Like, uh-uh, you don't talk like that around children. You just don't. It's not that serious. You know, the, my son didn't do nothing sexual to him. And the way he said it was just ridiculous. And then uh, he have shown me things before in the past, which is what, which is why I don't trust. I, and I know I was right not to trust him. But let me go back. And God said that you, I couldn't leave Austin in the room with my baby girl. If I had a girl without having uh, a camera in the room um, because he would try to molest her. And so, uh, or rape her. That's what he said. He said, I can't even trust him in the room with my child without a camera in the room. And then they over here trying to let him sue me for custody of my kids, of my baby. So anyway, so um, Austin had, uh, was doing homosexual stuff when Melby was a newborn baby. They got somebody back here uh, playing with some tool, but it ain't loud enough. Uh, so they might try to bring a train now. Cause uh, they do that. They have been. They be bringing trains. Yeah, here come a train to try to mess up my testimony.
but that's all right because I just talk very loudly and then a white man just uh, came on the trails uh, behind me so um I'll just stand right here then because the lady is over here sitting down over there and I don't want her but I don't want to hear all that and all that old kind of shit okay she finna get up okay so I'm finna go over there then and sit down because uh, I'm the one who needs to sit down but anyway so um he Austin had took off he was wearing my underwear when Melby was a newborn while I was trying oh, she not finna leave yet she finna sit down I'm finna sit down there's two benches over there so I'm finna sit one he was wearing my underwear sneaking and wearing my underwear beating me up in front of my baby boy when he was a newborn and watching men run around in their drawers and I was just like, I don't trust this kind of person, you know, that's still in my panties, wearing my panties to work. I'm finding my underwear in his work boots that he was wearing and tying them up and wearing my thongs. And why would I trust somebody like that around my child that's sexually deviant like that? You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna trust you around my baby. He was in prison the whole time. He was in and out of the county the whole time. You know, he never, he was not nobody to trust just because I had a baby by him. I gave him plenty of opportunities to show me that he was the type of father that could be around. And every, each time he proved to me that he wasn't. So being that I was not there to watch him, I told the uh, Maria, well, not Maria. I don't know if it was Maria. I told some lady. I think it was Maria. Um, I said uh, I wanted to contact CPS because I, I didn't feel that I didn't feel that Austin could be trusted. I felt like he would molest my son, and she contacted CPS. But um, then they started doing the witchcraft visitations on me, all saying that they was gonna molest him because I tried to report that Austin could possibly molest him and that I did not trust Austin around him because of the things, the sexual things that Austin, and Austin tried to, Austin was trying to rape me several times. Well, multiple times. So why would I want somebody that could not say, would not take no for an answer around me, around my son? And I'm in jail for you attacking him and me. And I'm telling these people, do not have this man around my son, bro. And so, um... He, so in January, when Jim found out the evidence, they took me in this shitter cell after they, uh, drug, they dragged, they drug me down the hallway, stripped me of my clothes, strapped me down in some chair, uh, filmed me, um, and, uh, spiked me, did something, did ri witchcraft ritual on me, and Cynthia had, had come into my body in the back of the jail, and they drug me to the front of the jail doing a ritual on me, and so my sister, my cousin Kiana Wiley was involved with the ritual. Uh, my sister Larissa Jones was involved with the death ritual. My sister Shakina Jones was involved with the death ritual. My father Andrew Jones was involved with the death ritual. My grandmother Irma Marshall was involved with the death ritual. Um, I'm just telling you the people that were there in the spirit during the death ritual. Um, this drug dealer, one drug dealer from, I don't know his name, but he he, he sold weed um, out there in Cairo. A big old black guy. Uh, I don't remember his name, but um, I didn't talk to him like that. But he, I knew, I knew who he was. I knew he sold weed or whatever. I don't know what else. But uh, he was involved with trying to do the death ritual on me. Um, and uh, the Conroe Police Department was the main people involved with uh, doing the death ritual on me. They was there in the spirit doing the death ritual. Um, Cynthia Overa was there. Um, in the spirit involved with the death ritual and Joseph Overa was there and then it was some black women and I didn't see their face so I don't know who because they was in the spirit doing the witchcraft holding up my body in the cell doing the ritual on me with these people um, and that's when Joseph and Cynthia when Cynthia came in my body first, she told me she was going to molest my son, her, and um, Joseph, and Austin. Oh, yeah, and Austin was there when they was doing the death ritual, my baby daddy. And they were saying they was in the satanic Illuminati, and they were saying that um, Cynthia said she sold her soul to Satan a long time ago. And then God said that Austin had took an oath and that they were trying to blood sacrifice me in Melbourne. And Cynthia said something about the rat in my belly, something about the baby in my belly, and some sort of ritual or blood sacrifice on his baby as well. But also something about some demonic position on us, uh, doing some sort of demonic position on us. And uh, that's four or five white men just came running down this trail and on their bikes and everything because they know that I'm telling about what's going on. 
And so, um, basically, uh, Jesus Christ, help me, Lord, because they threatened to kill me and my whole family and Cynthia and Joseph if I got out and told instead of just going on with my life after the charges was dropped. But I'm pregnant, and they was going to keep coming after me anyway for this baby, and they did. So that's why I'm coming out and telling the information. So anyway, um, oh, Lord, help me, because all that intimidation really get on my nerves. Like, um, So anyway, um Austin was there uh, during doing the death ritual in the spirit. He was there, and God said he took an oath in the satanic Illuminati and that he was trying to blood sacrifice, uh, I guess, Melbourne or me. But between him and Cynthia, we was both— uh, God, I think God said that Cynthia was trying to blood sacrifice me, but he said something about they was going to get killed, that Cynthia and, and, and Austin was going to get killed or something. And so, uh, I don't know, they threatened to kill me and my son, and that's when they, the Conroe Police Department, everybody, well, the Black Freemasons, oh, I forgot. Yes, the Black Freemasons was there uh, when they was doing the death ritual, uh, trying to do the death ritual on me, and they said they worship white people, and that this white people country, and that I shot a white person. So uh, they said that I should, I, you know, all that worship and the white women and stuff, they said all that. And then... Um, they was there basically the black freemasons was there when they was trying to do this death ritual on me and jesus christ came in the cell and he stopped them pretty much and he that's when he prayed over me and did all of that and he ran them off and everything and he showed who the real god was and they was in there trying to pretend the black freemasons was trying to pretend like they was god and they did some very powerful stuff that actually make you think that they was god until the real god came and his voice was like a million times deeper <laughs> His power was, like, amazing. So there they go. Uh, I'm by Marta, so there's short trains. And that same white man that just ran, ran past this is a very short path. He's coming back again. I ain't waving at me, and I don't want to talk to him. <laughs> but anyway, so um, the Black Freemasons was uh, there in the spirit while they was doing the death ritual. We're trying to do the death ritual on me. And my little sister had said, because all of them got in my body at the same time. Oh, and the inmates in the jail. All the inmates in the jail and the correctional officers, too. So they was all present while uh, they were trying to do the death ritual in the spirit. And they had got in my body, you know, with Cynthia in the back of the jail. And my little sister, God, had cast them out. And then my little sister had said I, that she she was trying to get in my body to make me kill myself. And um, I remember seeing something about when she stopped answering the phone for me or something. Like, I seen a vision of her and then uh, her saying something about, oh, we thought you killed him. See, I didn't know Austin had spent three weeks in the hospital. I didn't know that until I went against him in family court. And then I did not know that he still had a bullet in his leg until God told me. And then Austin confirmed what God said because God was like, uh, God was yelling and going off. Like, he was like, y'all starving her and that baby. She supposed to been had that baby. And then God was like, that was her apartment. And then God was like, uh let that bullet in his leg be a reminder to him about abusing women. I guess God feel very strongly about males abusing females. I don't know because it seemed like all of these men on this planet is sitting over here acting like it was okay for Austin to be beating me up. But according to the Lord, he's like, no, nah, that's very serious because she could have killed him. She could have killed him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all over here lying about it. That's serious. You don't you don't understand how afraid I get when a man come running up on me. My first instinct is to try to kill him. Not, oh, I'm just going to try to uh, go blow for blow with you. Like, I really can't go blow for blow with a man because I can't. And I'm not, I'm not, I am not. don't want to fight you like that. Now, a female, I'll fight a female quicker than I'll fight a man in defense, but I'll try to kill her too. That I'm just saying, see, and I'm glad that I'm out in nature and not looking at stuff according to their constitution because you go run up on anything that's got the power to kill you and try to hurt it, it might just kill you. It might not. It might hurt you real bad, but it might kill you. So running up on people that you think vulnerable and that you think can't do nothing and running up on women and children, you know, God was the only one who was like, no, nah, I ain't finna stand for that. Now nah, he, he abusing women. That's why he got that bullet in his leg. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to hold back the tears. I'll cry to him later because he is a righteous God. You know, he is a mighty God. And that's the truth. God looking down from the throne and said, that's why he got that bullet in his leg. Because he been down there hitting on the women. 
He been down there abusing on the women. And then y'all gonna take me in the damn jail cell and try to kill me. But anyway, let me go back to my testimony. Let me not get too carried away. And so um, then when we went to family court, Austin did confirm, and I'll get into details about how he said it, but he did confirm that he still had the bullet in his leg. And see, that's I didn't know that. So my little sister was saying that I guess she turned on me like she was supposed to pay my bond, and then they just stopped answering, and I had a vision of her saying, oh, we thought you killed him. And he spent three three weeks in the hospital, they said. So I guess everybody was hovering over him like, oh, Austin, and, you know, oh, she shot him, and this, this, and that. And the only one that was on my side was God. And they like, murder her, kill her, kill that baby. You know what I'm saying? Starve her and that baby in that jail because she shot Austin. She shot him. That's a uh, red bird. And that's how they were. They were all doing voodoo on me, trying to come and punch the baby in my stomach in the jail. They was coming, the black girls, the black gangs. They was acting like they were shooting at me with guns. They had the voodoo women coming. Uh, they were, the black uh, bloods gangs was chasing me and um, trying to shoot me in visions. Uh, they were trying to pop my belly in the jail, trying to crush the baby in, the, uh, j in my belly in the jail. Oh, Jesus, Father God, help me, Lord. So anyway, let me just go back to when they said it was going to molest and rape my son. So when they was doing this ritual and had me in this shitter cell uh, trying to kill me, they were saying before God cast them out, and my red birds, I know I'm Indian. I love my red birds. I love my blue bird. And I pray that I have a whole bunch of them one day in my house like this. I don't know. I don't, I know, I don't want to keep them in the house because they love to fly. They really do. Uh, but I just want I just love them. Love those birds. So anyway, so um, basically, um, that's when they said they were going to do the ritual um, on my son and rape him um, with with his tongue out that they would cut it and they said they would do it to me too and my entire family but let me go back to so Cynthia in the back of the segregated housing unit Cynthia got in my body and said she was a grand witch and she said that she was dying and needed a body she said all kind of stuff but God already said don't control with witches because they be lying I don't know what she said that was true or not but God know what was true and what was not true and it was true that she was a grand witch that's true because God said my mother was a grand witch too and so he did confirm that Cynthia was a grand witch and that my mother was a grand witch, but he confirmed that I have not taken an oath. So whatever they're bound to, to where they can't tell about stuff, I'm not bound to that. I'm not bound to it because I have not taken an oath to, to, to worship Satan. You know what I'm saying? And so um, basically, um, so they got somebody right here trying to watch me. As I'm giving my testimony, this person right here, and I, I'm not finna sit here and keep my attention on them. I'm just showing the intimidation, and now they're trying to pull off now, and they need to leave me alone because I'm telling the truth about everything that I'm saying, and I love my son. So Cynthia got into my body and told me she was a grand witch. And then she said that her and Austin was going to bring my baby up to the jail and let all the inmates in the jail rape my baby. She said she was going to let the police department rape my baby. She said that she was going to allow um, all the police officers on the police force, no, the correctional police officers that worked at the jail rape my baby and the uh, police officers uh, for the uh, police department. She said that worked there at the jail she said they were gonna let them rape my baby in a jail cell and she said they was gonna make me eat my baby um, in the jail uh, starve me in the cell and make me eat my baby um, and then she said that she was gonna make Austin that Austin was gonna have sex with his own son and put devil horns on him and make him have give him oral sex and sodomize his son um, Austin was saying it too and saying that it Melbourne liked it that he liked it that he liked uh, letting them uh, rape him and sodomize him um, Joseph said that he did it too he said he was sorry but he said he did it too uh, or he was gonna do it too uh, and then, um, uh, that he was in it too, in this little satanic KKK. Um, and then, uh, God cast them out of the kingdom of heaven. And that's when they, uh, all started screaming about this being exposed and about God destroying them or something like that. They threatened to riddle me with bullets and burn me with fire. 
um and this my storage is getting full so i'm gonna have to load this but i just wanted to go back to that before 